Uh, once again, Usha Jain, who started her own small business in her bedroom in, on her own backyard in Orange County, Irvine. Success of the business sales, she credits upon her sense of humor and involvement in the community. She has been entertaining with her jokes and poetry, not just to the Indian community, family functions, but also to the American service organizations like Rotary Club, churches, schools, senior centers, etc. She was on the board of fundraising professionals of the Orange County chapter, had a storytelling program at the Bowers Museum, and at times did a full page story entitled Immigrant Tells Stories from Her Heart in 1999. After retirement, she decided to move to Phoenix, Arizona to join her grandchildren. Anyway, here is Usha Jane. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Hi, you can do better than that. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, yes, that's more like it. Well, on this Republic Day, I want to say to all of you, Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Namaste. Hello. Satsriyakal and Ada. My name is Usha Jain, and I also want to thank Mr. President and all the new board members for inviting me for the third time to the Laguna Woods Club. So I thank you for your love, attention, and for making me feel so special. On, this is also a first meeting of this year. Yes. New year meeting, new board member, new president. So on this new year first meeting, I pray to God that he gives three things to all of you in your life. And that is health, peace, and contentment. I also pray to God that he takes away three things forever from your life. That is sadness, loneliness, and tension. And of course, I'm here today to give you three things. That's love, smile, and laughter. I see there are a lot of non-Hindi speaking people. So I'll try to speak in English as much as possible. But I want you to know that where I come from, English is spoken only after 8 p.m. <laughs> so I request all of you that if you like my jokes, my stories, Please let me know with your clap. Even if you don't like it, <laughs> clap it harder <laughs> to motivate me. And if you really, really like it, please feel free to shout it out, Jai Ho. Now recently, we had guests from India. They went to Florida for a visit, and when they came back from Florida, we are all sitting in our living room, and someone asked, how did you like Florida? And they said, oh, Florida was wonderful. There are so many bitches in Florida. There are black bitches, there are brown bitches, and of course, there are so many white bitches. <laughs> we all laugh just like you. But ladies and gentlemen, what I want to tell you today is this, that all of us came here at some point in time 
from all different parts of the world or mostly from India. We didn't know the language. There was a cultural shock, there was a language barrier. And in my case, I came with my husband who came for a master's program. And I'm a village girl, didn't speak a word of English, came with him on a tourist visa, and all of a sudden I was supposed to speak in English. So this is what happened. One day, one of my neighbor asked me to go with her for, to a visit to a doctor. As we are both sitting in the waiting room, all of a sudden she feels very sick and she falls on the floor. I got panicked and I ran to the receptionist and I said, I don't know what happened to her. I don't know. Few, min few minutes ago, she was in senses. Now she's nonsense. <laughs> and the receptionist looked at me and she said, you mean she's unconscious? And I learned a new word that day because I had no idea what does the unconscious mean. Now, this is not the only thing. One American family invited us for dinner. As we went to their house, my husband taught me that look, when we leave, you should say thank you for your hospitality. So I memorized that line. But of course, I'm such a confident, overconfident girl. I decided to add another line. <laughs> yes, you absolutely right, oh no. Because as we are leaving, I said thank you for your hospitality. Next time when you come to our house, we'll hospitalize you. <laughs> now, this is not the only cultural shock. I went to, in those days, we came in 1970, there used to be Kmart, which is, was equivalent to Walmart. I went there for shopping. And the total bill came out to be, oh, I don't know, $27.50. And I looked at the clerk and I said, how about if I give you $25 for all this? <laughs> and she was confused. She gave me a serious look. And I gave her a serious look back because I was serious. So she called the manager. And the manager said, Ma'am, this is the United States of America. We don't do that here. And I said, well, America took all the fun out of shopping. <laughs> now, I used to feel cool till I came to America and someone said, hey, babe, being cool has nothing to do with the weather anymore. I used to feel gay till I moved to California. <laughs> and someone said, listen, young lady, being gay has nothing to do with being happy anymore. But I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know the language. But we were not stupid. Do you remember in those days there used to be a door-to-door -door salespeople? like A1, Tupperware, M-Way. So one day at our apartment, a young man knocked on my door and he was a vacuum cleaner salesman. So I opened the door and I said, I'm sorry, we do not need vacuum cleaner. I'm not interested. But before I could close the door, this young man put his foot in the door and spilled a Ziploc full of dirt on my carpet. Before, and I, before I could do anything, he said, ma'am, please do me a favor. I need this job very badly. 
and please just give me a chance to demonstrate you don't have to buy it. And um, by this time he was inside the house and he said, I promise you, this baby is so powerful that it will lift every speck of dirt from your carpet. And if it doesn't, I assure you, ma'am, I will lick that dirt off of your carpet myself. I looked at him straight in the eye and said, Sir, let me get you a spoon because our electricity was cut off last night. Now, a few years passed. We assimilated in American culture. I cut my hair. I started to wear pants and shirt. I learned how to drive. And after a few years, I got a job. After a few years, we went back to India. And that's when I learned what a cultural difference people are talking about, that what a cultural shock is. And I like to share that with you. What I learned was that in America, people do not ask personal questions. But in India, even your neighbors had to write to ask you, how much do you make? <laughs> so as I'm visiting one of our khaki in the neighborhood, with one of our aunt in the neighborhood, she comes and she said, you've been married for more than five years, how come you don't have kid yet? And I said, aunt, we both work, we don't have time. <laughs> and she got silent for a minute and then she said, it really doesn't take that much time. <laughs> Now, in America, if you have a car accident, people who both the cars, they will come out and they will ask you, are you okay? But in India, if you have a car accident, and even if it's your fault, you'll come out of the car and you will say, Tokdi, andha hai kya? Ke tere baap ki sadak hai? So they will blame the other person. Are you blind? Does this road belong to your dad? Why don't you drive carefully? In America, I forgot what the person Oh, in America, people do not borrow things. They, unless it's an emergency, you don't go to a neighbor's house. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? Can I borrow your car? Can I borrow this? Where in India, it's very common. And I'm not talking about at wedding times or at special occasions. Even day-to-day, -day, people can barge in any time and they can ask to borrow your scooter, your car. Not only they can borrow, when they return, they can even advise you and they say, hey, listen, your carburetor is making a funny sound. You better get it checked out. <laughs> so that's what is done in India. Now, slowly, slowly, as we progressed in America, our kids realized that we don't care if you are from North, you from South, East, West, Bengali, Madarasi, Punjabi, whoever. We're going to marry somebody that we love. So there were a lot of inter-caste marriage. People start to marry Spanish people, black people, white people. So they were marrying each other. So one time, an Indian guy married a girl who was half Chinese and half Italian. So they had a baby boy. And as they were thinking of what to name the child, they started to have little disagreements because each one wanted to represent their own heritage. So now keep in mind, 
The guy is Indian, the girl is half Chinese and half Italian. So guess what they named the baby? They named the baby Ravioli. <laughs> Thank you. If like some of you didn't understand yet, you will. Then we can laugh again. <laughs> now, people often ask me, now I have lived in this country for more than 50 years. And on this Republic Day, maybe it's a good question to ask, which country do you like the most, India or America? And my answer to them is that I'm proud to be an Indian because India gave me my foundation. India gave me my sanskar. India gave me my roots. India made me who I am. But I'm equally grateful and proud to be an American citizen because America gave me a mountain of opportunities and said, look young lady, the only limit you have, climb as high as you want. Only limit you have is the one that you put upon yourself. And I am grateful for all the opportunities that America has given me. According to the UC Santa Cruz, <clears throat> Indians are the 1% population in America. Can I have a little water, please? <coughs> but we represent, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you. <clears throat> We are 1% of the population in America, but according to this survey, 8% of Indians are the founders of the high-tech companies. And I'm not even talking about all the professors, doctors, lawyers, writers, and comedians like me, of course. So it is, very, it, with a deep sense of proud, pride and honor. I love to call myself an Indian and an American. There is an old Indian song of, if someone, some of you remember it, please feel free to sing with me. And this is how it goes. <laughs> Thank you very much.